As the threat of Russia invading Ukraine looms, the United States has painted the most ominous picture till date. According to some senior officials in Washington, D.C., Russia has assembled about 70 percent of its military capabilities, which is needed for a full-scale invasion. Remember, the U.S. had earlier stated that Russia can invade by mid-February. This is because between the 15th of February to the end of March, the weather will be favorable and Moscow will have a peak window to advance its troops forward. The ground will be frozen, so heavier vehicles can be brought to combat. The U.S. report also warns that a Russian invasion will cost Ukraine 25 to 50,000 civilian deaths. 5,000 to 25,000 members of the Ukrainian military could lose their lives fighting, and 3,000 to 10,000 members of the Russian military could die in combat. The U.S. estimates that Kiev, the capital city, can fall within days to Russian troops, and if that happens, millions will flee, which could prompt a massive refugee crisis in Europe. The report does not mention anywhere that Vladimir Putin has hinted at invasion of Ukraine. But what the report has made clear is that all signs are pointing towards invasion. Protests have been propping up in support of Ukraine. People have gathered at various places, some even holding flags of different nations and chanting slogans in support of Kiev. Our executive editor, Palki Shama Pade, spoke to a few of these protesters today. Listen in. We are at the Independence Square in Kiev, and you see behind me one of the many protest marches uh, that have been going on in this city. You see people from all walks of life, uh, from different nationalities, carrying their respective flags and standing here in solidarity in sub-zero temperatures to say, uh, save Ukraine and calling on the world to stand up for Ukraine. Uh, we just heard them singing the Ukrainian national anthem, followed by chants of long live Ukraine. So the public sentiment is very strong as people get ready to take on whatever is coming their way as we see troop deployments go up on both sides of the border and uh, dire predictions coming from the U.S. that says uh, that Kiev could fall within 72 hours in case of a full-scale invasion. The people of Ukraine, the people of Kiev are standing up for their country. Well, you know, I think each one of our nations, uh, I'm, a, I'm an American, everyone is supporting Ukraine, okay? And uh, many of us have lived here for many, many years, okay? And uh, we have businesses here, we have friends here, even family here. Um, and it's, it's a uh, stand, standard of life that we would like to preserve for ourselves and uh, fellow Ukrainians. They're just big bullies who, who want to mess around with the sovereignty of Ukraine. We are a peaceful country uh, and I'm living here since 25 years. That's why I'm supporting Ukraine to be further peaceful. So I think right now it's a really politically charged time. And I think that uh, it's nice that they're giving something, but Germany has helped a lot and been a great partner to the Ukraine for many, many years. And um, that's uh, something to be proud of and something to be, you know, important. So I don't, I, you know, we can all joke and stuff, but like as a meme, but honestly, I, I, I don't joke about Germany's uh, support for Ukraine in general. Russia's giving a lot of things to try to scare people. Russia always tries to rule its neighbors with scare tactics, right? So. The th best thing we can do in the face of a bully like that is just not to be afraid, right? To be ready. If they do something, we'll be ready, right? But Russia has no reason to invade Ukraine. Ukrainian people, even those who speak Russian, are very, very patriotic and don't want to live in Russia. I think so. The problem lies with the Biden and the Putin and the Russia, the Ukraine. The problem between Ukraine and Russia, we don't need to look uh, back like the. It came from the Soviet Union or something. That is something, historical fact, which can be ignored, talked, and all. But the, the relationship between the Western countries and the India, the problem of the, uh, what you call the petrol money, the gas, the energy, this all thing is fueling the problem. Uh, peace in the world. We want peace everywhere. Amid escalating tensions in the Ukrainian borders, NATO troops continue to train in freezing conditions. The training is being carried out 100 kilometers away from the Russian border in the icy forests of Estonia, 
The winter camp exercise is putting NATO troops to the test in extreme winter conditions. Donc euh, en Estonie, on a eu moins 14, on ressentit, donc euh, forcément quand il y a du vent, c'est un peu plus froid. C'est assez difficile à vivre, mais euh, on s'adapte, on essaie de s'adapter en tout cas. The annual exercise brings together nearly 1,300 British, French and Estonian soldiers. The, the purpose of today's exercise is to prove Uh, our ability to work in the most demanding uh, conditions uh, that soldiers can face uh, in the cold and in the forest. But this exercise. Development comes at a time when Russia has deployed more than 100,000 soldiers near the Ukrainian border, in part to protest NATO presence on its borders. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.